the goal of this video is to create a differential drive car. A differential drive car has two wheels with motors on each wheel. By spinning the motors at the same speed, you can go straight. And by turning them at different speeds, you can turn one way or the other. This is this figure shows the model of the car we'll be building. There'll be a chassis, which is shown in yellow, and the two wheels. Each of these wheels will have a, a motor, which is shown by this uh, arrow, blue arrow. The motor will let this wheel spin at constant speed, and the radius of these wheels is going to be 0 0.2. That's the only variable we want to know when we are thinking of creating these shapes. So open the simulate app or simulate.exe. We'll work with this uh, hello.xml, so we'll make a copy of that. Uh, let's call it differential drive. And then it usually opens up the box falling on a pin. Okay, so let's start editing this file and see the changes on this uh, simulator. Okay, we are all set to begin. First of all, let's turn gravity off. This makes it easy to work with this. Option gravity equals zero, zero, zero. And then reload. And then you see the block doesn't move. Okay, I'm going to just change the color of the plane. Let me make it uh, sort of uh, like gray. Okay, that is it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reuse this box and make that to, into the chassis. So for that, I need to be able to uh, well, rotate it. I'll rotate it by 90 degrees about uh, one of the axes. So when I find the axis, I can just go to rendering and say frame body. And so you can see the axis. The red, green, blue signifies the X, Y, Z axis respectively. So the green is the Y axis and I need to rotate this by 90 degrees about the Y axis. So what I'm going to do is here is say Euler equals 0, 90, 0, and then reload. And now we have this uh, flat against the plane. Now, just going to reduce the thickness of this, of the box, and also maybe increase the length. So I'm going to basically play with uh, all three dimensions. Okay, so in this case, I want the height to be 0 0.05. The length to be, I want it to be one meter box. 0.5 is going to be half the length. And then I want this to be, let's just be 0.2. Let's see what this does. So save this and then reload. And I think this looks okay. okay. I'm going to change the color of that and I'm going to make it uh, sort of like yellow. So, That should be here. And now we have it as yellow. Okay. Uh, let's move it slightly down. In fact, we'll move it to about 0.2 meters from the floor because our wheels, which will go here, will have a radius of 0.2. So let's move this to 0 0.2. Now it's uh, the height I want it to be. And I can just clear off the frame. Okay, now that I have got the chassis, let me call that chassis so I can specify a name. Clear name equals chassis. Okay, now I'm going to move on to creating the wheels. For that, I would need a cylinder. And so what I need to do is I'll copy this. And I need to nest it inside the chassis. So I'll nest it inside. So you can see that this body is inside this body, which means it becomes a child of this chassis, which is the parent. I'm going to call it uh, wheel. Uh, depending on where I put it, I can call it left or right wheel. I'm always going to put this 0, 0, 0, 0, 90, 0, 0, 0, 0, so that I can then look at it and then modify the axis if it needs. Uh, I'm going to create a hinge joint between the wheel and the box, which is the chassis. And then I want this to be a cylinder. 
cylinder has two attributes, the length and the radius. The first index is the uh, length, and sorry, the radius. So I'll call, I'll make that 0.2. And then the second index is going to be the thickness. I'll call that 0 0.05, which is approximately this. And then I'm just going to make it uh, green in color. So let's do like this. Okay, now you see that the um, the wheel is inside the chassis. So let's see how we can move this. So first of all, let's show the axis. Okay, so the blue, which is the Z axis, are not visible because they're clearly here. Uh, but in this case, what I need to do is clearly I need to make rotate this cylinder about the x axis, the red axis, so that since I rotate by 90 degrees, it will be along. It will be like how the wheel should be. So I'll change rotated by 90 degrees about the X axis. And that looks good. Okay, now I need to move it perhaps, let's say that this is the front of the uh, car and this is the rear of the car. So I need to move it first to the right and then behind. And so I need to work with this uh, position. So this position is now with respect to the parent and the parent is the chassis. And if, so I'm going to move it. Let's see. It's really hard to see this because the axes are, are parallel. So I'm going to do this is I'm going to try to move this away. Make it one and then reload. And now it's gone away and now it's a little better for us to see what the axes are. Okay, so I said, I need to move this, um, wheel, uh, let's move it on, let's say the left side. So I'll have to move it by uh, 0 0.2. Uh, so this is 0 0.5, this is 0 0.2, and this is 0 0.5. So 0 0.2 is this. So clearly I need to move by 0 0.2 along the green, which means that's along the y-axis. Let's just do that one at a time. So let's make this point two for here and see what that does. So it did move it along the uh, y axis. Now I want it to move along the z axis, this blue. And since that's the positive z axis, I need to move it by a negative distance of half the length. And the half the length is actually 0 0.5. So I'll move it negative 0 0.5 instead of one and then do reload and then you see it's probably uh, just about there now i want to probably avoid this wheel penetrating inside the chassis so i'm just moving to move it slightly more so point two two five maybe a little bit more okay okay we got this now let's try to set up the axis for the wheel so the axis or the or for the hinge joint are going to be along this blue and they're going to be pointing away from the blue so the, the direction of the blue is the positive z axis and it will be negative z axis so i just put axis equals zero zero minus one and then reload now i don't see the axis the joint yet so i just click on joint and you can see it's actually this way. So if you take your right hand, you point your thumb towards the arrow, then the direction of your curled fingers will give you the direction in which this car will move or the wheel will, will move if you spin it in the positive direction. So in this case, if you give a positive velocity, it will actually spin uh, counterclockwise, which means the car will go forward. So this direction looks good to us. That's why I chose it to be along this axis. Okay, since this was a left wheel, let's just conveniently call this left wheel. And now since we've worked so hard getting the left wheel, we can easily create the right wheel by copy pasting this code and making a few changes. So the right wheel is going to be mirrored across this axis. So what I need to do here is I just need to change this to minus 0.2. Let's go to the other side. And the axis will remain the same and the size L will remain the same. So let's see what this will do. Okay, 
looks good. Okay, so we have in fact now created uh, the the differential drive car. What remains to be done is for us to test it, make it move. For that, we need to, in this case, I'm going to add actuators on both these wheels. They will be velocity servos so that if we set a velocity, they'll be able to spin the motors, spin the joints to go at that speed. So for that, I create an actuator tag. And then close it. Okay, so now I need to have a velocity servo. So uh, it will start to drag velocity. Then I, I end it. Okay, within that, I will uh, give it a name. Let's say left uh, velocity servo. And I now need to tell it that it would be the servo for the left wheel. So I need to tell it something about the, about the, tell it something uh, about which joint it is about. So joint equals, see, I think I did a mistake here. This should not be a name for the body. I'll call this give it name for the joint. That way I can uh, reuse the Let me remove this. Now you could obviously have a name for the body as well as joint, but in this case, I don't really need a name for the body. That, that, that's the wheel, I just need it for the joint. So let me call that joint left wheel. And then one more parameter I forgot is I need to set the gain. That would be a, a parameter called KB, and that should be set equal to you know, some number. Let's take 100. So now let's Take this and uh, right velocity servo joint is right wheel, like this one, and then KV is fine. Okay, so now let's see what happens if I say reload. Okay, nothing really happens. That's because um, I've not really set the the servos to change the speed. Actually, it turns out that you can actually set them like this. You can just move these icons to set the speed. So in fact, when you move this, you can see that the left wheel is spinning. And then I'm going to make the right wheel spin the opposite direction, so it's spinning in the other direction. Okay, now this is not going anywhere because gravity is turned off. Let's turn on the gravity. Okay, and now let's reload. Okay, uh, maybe I need to increase the size of the plane. So let's go here and make it you know, five by five. Reload, do better. And then let's try to make this go. Okay, it's going very slowly. And then you can turn off the frame off and the joint. Okay, so this is one way of getting this to move. Another way of getting this to move is to actually change the acceleration. So let's just change the acceleration to 10 and fine. Now, this acceleration in the x and y direction that's not realistic, but just to get this car to move, we'll do that. And then we just reload. And now we can see it's going really fast. Okay, so this is uh, basically the model for a differential drive car. Next video, I'll show how to control this using Mojo Copilot.